What's up everybody, this is Master Ian Gamer, and welcome to another Overwatch news update. Today we've got some pretty significant topics to talk about, including a number of planned upcoming hero changes, two of which, being for Sombra and Hanzo, that we actually have some specifics given to us by the Overwatch developers. And also, there have been a number of quality of life changes added in this most recent Overwatch update with the Year of the Dog event that you might not have realized had been added. Real quick though, if this is your first First time on my channel, then don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. And with that, let's jump right on in. First up, we got a post on the forums from Jeff Kaplan a couple days ago, talking about all the heroes that Blizzard is currently looking at and considering giving some kind of changes or reworks. This was actually a response to a post asking if Blizzard was looking into reworking D.Va at all, and Jeff responded by saying that their current list has Mei, Sombra, Symmetra, Doomfist, Torbjorn, and Hanzo. Now, Sombra and Hanzo actually have some specific changes which Jeff Goodman talks about, which I'll get to in just a second. But first, I just want to mention that four out of the six listed heroes are defense heroes. Now, Symmetra is technically a support, but we all know that she is played as defense. So hopefully this might be the start of a sort of revolution where defense heroes, who so far have generally been the least useful kind of DPS, more or less, might finally be getting the help they need so that heroes like Symmetra and Torbjorn won't just be subject to being troll picks. I don't know, maybe I'm getting just a little too optimistic, but regardless, I am super excited to see what they do with all these heroes. Given that Jeff is publicly talking about them, that pretty much confirms that we're going to see something or other happen to them, likely relatively soon. And as I mentioned, we actually have some of these changes already laid out. For starters, there is a post by Jeff Goodman talking about planned changes for Sombra, which it sounds like are going to be coming to the PTR sometime pretty soon. Apparently some of these changes actually got kind of leaked onto the live server with the Year of the Dog update. But the complete list of currently planned changes are as follows. No longer gains ult from health pack healing, weapon spread decreased by 10%, hacking speed increased from 0.8 seconds to 0.65 seconds, hacking will disable more abilities, which are listed down below as Genji's double jump and wall climb, Farah's hover jets, Hanzo's wall climb, Lucio's currently running crossfade song will be disabled, that's pretty interesting, and Mercy's angelic descent. He then puts a little comment at the bottom of the post saying that, the idea here is to take some power out of her ultimate and give her more power and usefulness in the rest of her kit. Now, I by no means am a Sombra main or even a Sombra player, but I do know that in most situations, she's primarily used for her EMP ultimate. That's by far the strongest part of her kit in most levels of play. And so it looks like Blizzard is trying to balance it out a bit by reducing the power and usefulness of her ultimate, but then also buffing the power of her other abilities. Again, I don't play Sombra much myself, but this sounds like a pretty good change. If any of you are Sombra mains or Sombra players even, I would love to hear your thoughts about this change down in the comments below. Moving on now to what Jeff said pertaining to the upcoming Hanzo rework, which if you don't know is something that's been a long time coming. The devs have actually been hinting at this upcoming rework for, I think, months at this point. So it's pretty exciting that we're finally getting to see a bit of what they're actually testing with him internally. So in this post, Jeff Goodman goes through three of the major rework ideas that they've tested out with Hanzo, but it sounds like have decided they aren't going to go through with. Some of these are pretty interesting. Interesting. So first up, they tried replacing Scatter Arrow with Piercing Arrow. Now first of all, this is pretty interesting because if you saw my Hanzo rework video that I made, where I gave my own thoughts about what they could potentially do to Hanzo, a Piercing Arrow was actually one of the abilities I mentioned in that video. However, it sounds like Blizzard isn't interested in giving him this sort of ability. While testing it, it was an extremely fast projectile and would pierce through enemies and barriers. This was pretty fun as a snipey arrow that could occasionally take a super long ranged shot at an enemy Widow, Farah, or just a support in the backlines. Unfortunately though, it was pretty frustrating to be feeling safe behind a barrier and get headshot through it and die. 
I wholeheartedly agree with this. Even though I talked about it as being a potential change, I definitely agree with Jeff here in that I don't think it would actually be really fun to face off against. As annoying as Scatter Arrow is currently, I think this Piercing Arrow could potentially be even worse. Moving on to the next thing they tried out, they played with just changing Scatter Arrow significantly as opposed to replacing it entirely. The most successful version was one where it had a very fast projectile speed, could only only ricochet one time, could no longer split off the floor, and it had a much tighter spread. This version removed the floor scatter entirely, but added some new options in either using it as a long range sniper shot or using it more accurately off a single wall. This one was pretty fun, but mostly just felt really hard to use consistently. There were some areas of maps where it felt useful and fun, but a lot of the time there weren't any usable surfaces around to cause a split, and using your cooldown to merely increase the projectile speed of your shot didn't feel great as a common use case. So this is a lot of information to take in, but I think I have a pretty good image of how this would work. And yeah, I it sounds like it wouldn't really fix the issue. It would kind of just make the ability more complicated in annoying ways. So it's probably best from what I can tell that they didn't go with this change either. The last ability they played around with was a new ability bound to his reload key, which is currently unused. This is a a really interesting idea because I've never even considered a hero that doesn't have to reload possibly having an ability bound to the R button or you know if you're on console whatever button that is. This ability would have a small animation delay about two to three seconds after which your cooldowns would reset. This meant if you wanted to sacrifice some normal shots, you could forcibly reset your special arrows. This was pretty interesting when paired with the piercing arrow idea but felt pretty crazy with Sonic Arrow. The idea overall wasn't bad, but I think it's shelved for now. I don't know, all these abilities just seem kind of messy, and I'm not really surprised after reading through this that Blizzard has decided not to go with any of them. So it sounds like Blizzard themselves are still trying to just figure out what they want to do with Hanzo which is a bit frustrating because I would kind of like to see the changes coming through, but I absolutely understand the necessity to get it right and make the changes actually good changes. Now, as a last note regarding upcoming hero changes, there are some confirmed changes coming for Doomfist as well. If you didn't know, there was actually a small change to his hand cannon with the most recent update. The damage was reduced from 11 to 6, but the number of bullets fired increased from 6 to 11, and the spread pattern was made more consistent. So essentially, it has the same damage output now, but it seems like they made this change in order to make its damage output more consistent. And on the forums, Jeff also did mention that there is a second change coming for Doomfist as a follow-up to this one, and it sounds like it's going to be coming on the PTR, most likely around the same time that Sombra's changes go to it. So overall, there are a ton of hero changes coming up on the horizon. We haven't heard anything specific for May or Symmetra, so I'm eagerly waiting to see what ends up coming through for heroes like them. Moving on now to some of the other features that you might not have known were added with this most recent update, there were a number of quality of life changes, many of which people have been asking for for quite a long time. Someone by the name of In the Oven You Go on Reddit was kind enough to compile a list of all these major changes. So going through their list, the first one is the skin change option at the start of a match. I'm sure most of you have heard about or at least have seen this in-game at this point. Also, the game now tells you what game mode you are searching for while in a queue for that game mode, and also tells you the map and game mode from the hero select screen at the start of a match. Both of these are helpful because they just give more information to the player, which especially for newer players who might not be as familiar with the UI and everything yet, this is going to be an incredibly helpful update. When you die as D.Va, you can now notify your team of your self-destruct charge instead of just telling them your mech recall charge. As a D.Va main, I cannot even begin to tell you how helpful this update will be. It's so frustrating to try to communicate that you have your self-destruct ultimate after you've died, but all you can do is show them the alt charge for your mech recall. So I absolutely am glad that they added this. And another nice hero change is that Zen Orbs now tell you the hero and name of the person that you're targeting. 
Again, this is just a nice little update to help you better understand what's happening in the match. After backfilling, you no longer have to wait 15 seconds before seeing the enemy's comp. This is one that people have been talking about quite a bit over the past few months. So yet another nice change. And last was the ability to change the opacity of objective markers in game. While this is an issue that personally I've never had a problem with, I have heard a lot of other people talk about it being annoying to have the icon for the objective blocking your vision. So personally, I don't think I'll ever be messing with this, but I know that a lot of people are going to be really happy that they can now tune it to their liking. And that'll do it for today's Overwatch news update. There was actually quite a bit to cover, so I apologize that this video is probably going to be a bit longer than most of my other Overwatch news videos. But as always, I would love to hear your thoughts about anything I talked about here today down in the comments below. I'll have links to everything I talked about down in the description, and otherwise be sure to leave a like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and turn on notifications to both help out my channel and keep up with all my future Overwatch content. This is Master Ian Gamer signing off, and until next time, have a great day.